Switching on the cookers now, we're going to move on to this particular appliance, which is the warm air unit, which we'll learn lots about as we go through the course. Okay. Um, now we've got to, before we can gas rate this one, we've got to do something. Okay. So get in and have a look at the data badge here. Tell me what you think about this appliance. What can you see from looking at the data badge? What kind of appliance is it? It's an old appliance. It's an older one. It's gross. It's gross. That's good. That's info we need. How many readings can you see? No, there's three. So we've got three settings. Range rated. So it's range rated. Good. So if we're going to gas rate this, we need to know what setting it's in, don't we? So what measurement do we need to take first before we can gas rate it? We need the burner pressure, don't we? Okay. So we need to take the burner pressure before we can gas rate it. So I'm going to have a quick look. I have got 9.2, 12.5, or 15 millibars. Okay. Now obviously we're going to set that to suit the property it's in. We're going to assume we're going for the lower range. So we're going to check it, and if necessary, we're going to set it to 9.2 millibars. Okay. So I've got all the equipment we need here. Um, when we are taking our burner pressures, we need to make sure we get it from the right test nipple. So we've gone through a little bit about these multifunctional control valves, and we've looked at the two test nipples that we can see on. Well, it's nice and easy to work out what's what. Let's follow the gas supply in. So the gas that's going into the top of this multifunctional control valve is going to be what sort of pressure? High. It's going to be the higher of, of the two pressures, isn't it? It's the incoming pressure. If we go through the multifunctional <coughs> control, we're going to go through the regulator, we're going to come down to the burner pressure. So this outlet <coughs> side going to the burner will be the burner pressure. So the nipple that's closest to the inlet will be the inlet pressure, and the nipple that's <coughs> closest to the outlet will be the burner pressure. So we're going to get our manometer onto there and, and we can um, take this burner pressure. Okay. So what do we do before we loosen or remove any sort of test nipple? We make sure the gas is off. Okay. So we've got the gas off here at the main. All right? So all I'm going to do is just loosen this nipple. Um, you can't get it out anyway because the manufacturers stop you from doing it. But we don't want to take it out because we could lose it. We're just going to loosen it, okay? So we're just going to loosen that nipple, and I'm going to put my gauge nice and securely on. Now I've used the little S hook technique out, you know, from the solder to half make it easier for us to use it and see it, and it's stable, it's upright. It's, we haven't got to worry about it falling over, okay? So I can pop the gas back on now. And I'm going to get this one going. Now this old girl's got a pilot light, so we're going to get this <coughs> pilot light going. It might just take a minute or two just to pull that gas through. Be patient with them. Remember, it's not how fast you press it. You can press it as fast as you want. If there's no gas coming through, it's not going to light. So just give it a few seconds to, to come through. <coughs> there we go, pilot light on, I'm just going to let that warm up. Good stuff. Right, pilot's on, make sure we've got power. So we're going to fire up the burner, we'll hear it fire up, and then I'm going to register um, a pressure. It's gone, it's fired. Yeah, it was already on. <coughs> right, so we've fired up, we can now see a pressure in the gauge, okay? Going to make sure it's reading the same both sides, remember. Always make sure. Just give that a little bit of an adjustment if necessary. Okay, I've got just over 8 millibars. Now that's not 9.2, is it? Okay, so technically we've now got an immediately dangerous situation. 
This is not <coughs> operating as the manufacturer <coughs> says it should be. So, no problem. I'm going to gently remove the dust cap and I'm going to see the adjusting screw. Very, very gentle. Don't go poking it, prodding it. It's just really, really gentle. <coughs> If I move it one way, pressure's going to go up. If I move it the other way, pressure's going to go down. You haven't got to remember. You can just see how the gauge is behaving. <coughs> so, nice and gently, I'm going to turn <coughs> it one way to the left. Oh, I can see it dropping. Okay, see that gauge dropping? I want to bring it up. I want 9.2. So, nice and gently, we'll bring that up. Just turn that to the right. Nice and gently. There we go. I'm just going to get a good look at that. Right. I'm going to go a tiny, tiny bit more. Go on, up you go. Not being very responsive. Oh, there we go. So that is just over nine millibars. Now that's as good as we're going to get on a, on a water gauge, isn't it? Okay, just over nine millibars. We want 9.2. Okay, good. So I'm going to turn that burner off, and I'm going to extinguish the pilot light because what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that gauge. Okay, I don't want any sources of ignition if I'm removing a gauge from a gas supply. But what am I going to do before I remove that hose? Turn the gas off. I'm going to turn the gas off, okay? So gas back off. I'm going to remove that hose. I'm going to put that nipple back in. And what am I going to do now to this nipple? Test it. I'm going to test, test it with a bit of leak detection fluid, okay? So I'm going to need to put the gas back on. I'm going to need to light the pilot. And remember, that test point will only be live when the burner's firing. So I need to fire up the burner. Uh, I've got a tissue. And I'm going to just drag a little bit of LDF across that. And look for any bubbles. No bubbles. We can clean that off. So there we go. We've measured and we've set and we've adjusted the burner pressure.